One of Colorado's most powerful Republicans asked a state trooper to keep his drunk driving arrest quiet. It's not all he told the trooper on newly released body cam video. I shouldn't drive so slow. I shouldn't dress up so I'm going to speed limit. One of the strongest opponents of abortion at the state capitol disclosed today he paid for a girlfriend's abortion because that's what was best for her life. This comes as abortion rights supporters kick off an effort to get abortion access put in the state constitution. Right now, we know we have legislators and the governor that support the issue, but down the road, we can't be sure. And this week's good news is a meeting between two families, strangers, now inseparable, tonight on Next. Newly released body camera video shows the top Republican in the Colorado House asking a state trooper to keep his drunk driving arrest quiet. Sure enough, Minority Leader Mike Lynch's arrest stayed a secret from his colleagues and from voters for more than a year. It came out this week, and Lynch proclaimed that he was showing leadership by addressing it now. Here's politics guy Marshall Zellinger. I'm a state representative here, and uh, if there's anything we can do to kind of keep the, keep the press out of this, that'd be great. State House Minority Leader Mike Lynch could be the luckiest man in Colorado. He sped down I-25 drunk and did not kill anyone. Do you have a gun? He reached for a gun in front of a trooper and did not get shot. And he asked for his arrest to be kept secret, and it did not get out. No, they'll find out. They'll find out. This will be a big deal. On Wednesday, Lynch told me he was being a leader for talking about the arrest he asked to be kept quiet. I was realistic that, you know, this would come out someday, and, and I would face it like I'm doing right now, and that's what... Leaders do. In September 2022, when pulled over for going 90 right past a state trooper, Lynch was asked to get out of the car when the trooper saw a pocket knife. I see you got your pocket knife there. I'm just going to grab that from you here. Don't yep. touch it for me. Oh, Don't I have touch a gun it. in this pocket too. You have a gun? Yes. Stop. Don't move. Stop. No, no. You're not going to do that, okay? No, sir. We're not going to reach for guns when we're out and talking yes, to the police. Yes, I told you, you flat out, do not that. touch that knife and you reach for a gun. That's how people get shot. When I asked Lynch about reaching for his gun, well, Here's his take. I think it was a, oh crap, I forgot. I've got a gun in my pocket. And so I was trying to be proactive with the officer. In the future, please, if I ask you if you have any weapons, don't reach for anything, okay? I'm sorry. Lynch was put in the back of a patrol car to be processed, just like anyone else. But listen to what the trooper told him. To be very honest with you, normally for DUIs, they go to jail, okay? But I'm going to allow you to call for me to come pick you up. I talked with a Colorado State Patrol spokesperson tonight about why the trooper said that and did not take Lynch to jail. Just as I was told on Wednesday, being released to a sober party is an option within State Patrol policy. And the trooper acted within policy because the options are go to jail, detox, or a sober party. The spokesperson told me the trooper was okay to do what he did. Marshall, when this story broke, we talked here about how accusations of criminal behavior or even convictions can sometimes be worn as a badge of honor in today's Republican Party. I, for one, have not seen any effort by other Colorado Republicans to have him resign or be taken out of leadership or drop his congressional campaign. He's just kind of steady as she goes. Perhaps that means we should be doing background checks on other people running for office to see if there's anything that we don't know about, like we didn't know about this. But there are other people. We, I mean, this goes back years. Dan Pabone, former state representative. We got dash cam video of a DUI, and he ended up not coming back to the Capitol. He did for a while, and then I don't think he ran again. And so, like, it has impacted other people's jobs in the past because other outcry has happened that, as you say, we haven't heard here. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's party politics, so it's all about what the person's party will accept or not. Marshall, thank you. Denver Mayor Mike Johnston says that the city's seven hotel shelters for migrants are maxed out. So early next month, families with kids will be again moved out into the streets when they hit the time limit. We've seen migrant families end up on the streets before. Some ended up there by choice. Advocates set up this small encampment in North Denver after the city swept residents of a large encampment near Zunai and Spear earlier this month. Some of the people there we talked to last week turned down the congregate shelter offered by the city, didn't feel safe there. Advocates provided cold weather gear and food, and the folks we talked to said that they thought that they'd stay in that encampment through the cold snap. Volunteers cleaning up the camp today said the pattern of constantly being swept from one street to another makes it harder for migrants to connect with available services. And every time that a sweep like this happens, it's putting them back to square one. Most of the time, the camps are set up strategically because they're near services, you know, so when 
these sweeps happen and people are moved, it's just making their lives harder and it's, it's making it even you know, more impossible to, to reach any progress. Sweep comes as Denver City Council considers whether to prohibit sweeps in freezing temperatures unless camps are deemed to be at public safety risk or in the right of way. Final vote on that is scheduled for the end of the month. One of the loudest anti-abortion voices at the state capitol disclosed today that he paid for an abortion for his pregnant girlfriend and it was the best thing for her life. Republican Rep. Richard Holtorf, who sought to restrict abortion rights and called supporters of abortion access godless heathens, did not appear to grasp the disconnect. Holtorf was speaking in opposition to an abortion rights resolution from Democrats. He talked about a series of quote-unquote beautiful women he has impregnated in his life. He said that he paid for an abortion for one because it was the right choice for her. I had to respect her rights because she said she didn't want to keep her baby. But I respected her rights and actually gave her money to help her through her important critical time so she could live her best life. Obviously, that's, that's 180 degrees different from everything that Holtorf has advocated for in terms of law. He declined to answer our questions today. Holtorf is one of several Republicans running for Congress in Colorado's 4th Congressional District. That's Loveland, Dugco, and out to the Eastern Plains. Our next conversation tonight is with the head of Colorado's leading abortion rights group, COBOL. They're about to kick off a statewide effort to put abortion access into the Colorado Constitution. But first, given the news of the day, I had to ask CEO Karen Milton about Representative Holtorf's acknowledgement that an abortion was what was best for his pregnant girlfriend. He just opposes abortion rights for other people. It's such a common story. Uh, we have many people who tell us that folks who might be vehemently anti-abortion are only so unless they actually need one or need to help someone else get one. So it didn't surprise me as much as it should have. Next week, you kick off a campaign to ask voters to enshrine abortion rights in Colorado state constitution. Colorado already has some of the least restrictive abortion access in America. Why is this necessary? So right now, we know we have legislators and the governor that support the issue, but down the road, we can't be sure. And given uh, how many people in all the states across the country thought that this right was one they would have forever, um, I think that the Supreme Court proved otherwise. Is there such a thing in your view as too extreme of a position to hold in favor of abortion access? You know what? I don't know what I don't know what that would look like because what I see are people. Uh, if you're looking at reproductive health care and abortion is a part of that, if you're dealing, if you're a doctor dealing with a patient, you're letting them know all the options. Is it too extreme to say if something isn't right or if this is new information that you and I should be making that decision or worse, government? Um, and I would still say no. When our conversation continues, I'll ask Milton why Democratic Governor Jared Polis is not yet supporting that measure to put abortion rights in the state constitution. And we'll discuss whether she agrees with Polis, who has said that abortion is bad. Whoever stole nearly all the copies of the URA newspaper, the one with the story about the police chief's stepson being arrested for rape, that backfired badly because that story was then shared here and all over Colorado last night. And now the small town newspaper says the thief has confessed. The Uray County Plain Dealer says that the person returned more than 200 editions of their paper stolen from newsstands yesterday. They'd already gone and printed another run and taken them around town. The Uray County Sheriff's Office said late tonight that there's a suspect and that person will be cited. They did not name the person. They did say the suspect is not a member or relative of local law enforcement or associated with those sexual assault suspects. So we're likely to know our siblings longer than we know anyone else in our lives. I mean, just think about it. You're going to know your brother or sister probably longer than you know your parents or your spouse or your friends. When sibling relationships are strained because kids are in the foster care system, often not together, there's a nonprofit that steps in to keep them close. This week's Word of Thanks microgiving campaign supports elevating connections. They help brothers and sisters separated in foster care stay connected through twice monthly meetups. They do activities together. They offer a summer camp as well. A lot of chances for these kids to stay in each other's lives despite their challenges. And Elevating Connections also has an arts program for kids in foster care to help them find their voice and to develop meaningful friendships they can keep. 
Siblings in the foster care system can miss out on years of shared experiences, the stuff that lifelong memories are based on. That's what Elevating Connections provides. Scan the QR code on your screen or text the word THANKS to 303-871-1491 to get that link to donate. I'll never ask you to give if I don't, so of course I'm matching the first 50 donations of $5 that come in. And you can now simplify your giving with a monthly donation to the Word of Thanks Fund. Blown away, more than 800 of you have signed up for this where you put in your information once and a monthly donation will be automatically split among all the wonderful nonprofits we feature. Use the same t QR code or text to get there. Democratic Governor Jared Polis said last year, quote, Democrats don't believe abortion is good. We believe it's bad. Is that what you believe? When our next conversation returns, whether the governor is shifting his views on abortion to run for another office. After apologizing for not giving ranchers and locals a heads up last month, the state's putting everybody on notice. More wolves are coming. And we will end the week the way we always do with pure joy and encouragement. Your good news, next. Abortion rights supporters are about to kick off statewide signature gathering for a ballot measure that would put abortion rights in the state constitution. The governor supports abortion access, but he has not come out in favor of this constitutional amendment. That's where we pick up tonight's next conversation with Karen Middleton from the abortion rights group, COBOL. Democratic Governor Jared Polis said last year, quote, Democrats don't believe abortion is good. We believe it's bad. It should be minimized. Is that what you believe? Um, I don't believe it. And I don't know if asked again with more lead time, if he would answer it the same way, to be honest. I mean, Have you asked him? Uh, you know, I haven't, but I've known him for many a long time. And I believe at the end of the day, you know, everyone knows he leans toward libertarian values. He likes to figure out how to work across the aisle and more power to him. Governor Polis was actually asked recently if he supports your proposed ballot measure to enshrine abortion rights in the state constitution. And he was noncommittal. Did that surprise you? You know, it doesn't. I think uh, for uh, elected officials, they want to be more cautious. They want to wait and see. Maybe they want to see it on the ballot. They want to make sure we've gotten signatures. So I'm not concerned. I think he will. He'll follow it. And when it seems like the right time, I am um, sure he will be public about his decision on that. And a final question. You said you've known the governor for a long time. Do you get the sense that he is attempting to shift or at all moderate his views on abortion rights, perhaps in uh, preparation for a run for president? Or is it just that he's not particularly interested in that issue the way that he is interested in other issues? I think it's just a matter of balancing the issues and the priorities. I think that this is one of a handful of issues that are always part of this. He's always been there when we needed him. And so I'm, I, I trust that he will follow um, his own values and be with us in the end. In my full 10-minute conversation with Milton, we also discussed the impact of misinformation, like false claims that Colorado law somehow allows abortions after birth, and how that's tied to the threat of violence faced by providers and patients. You can find that on the next YouTube channel. Colorado Parks and Wildlife says it is going to pause loosing wolves on the western slope while they review how the first wolf release got to be such a cock-up. No notification for the locals there, just a photo op for the governor and his husband. It rubbed people the wrong way and actually led to apologies from state officials. But CBW is moving ahead with plans to procure more wolves. A deal announced today to capture up to 15 wolves off of tribal lands in eastern Washington. It's a partnership with the Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation. State workers are going to go pick out their faves sometime between December of this year and March of 2025. CBW says no more wolf releases before that point. Lauren Robinson, my goal is every time you're on next, I'm going to do the most controversial story <laughs> of the day right before you, but then not ask you to talk about it. So let's take the wolves and let's, let's put them over here. Okay. That's the western slope. We're going all to right. put, put them over here. Uh, and instead, let's talk about the weekend forecast. All right. All right. I'm following what you're doing there. Now we're going to see temperatures warm up a bit. We're going to see a drying trend, especially across the front range in eastern plains, with just some brief spotty snow showers expected across the high country. Right now we're at 24 degrees at DIA. We're dry, but 
cloudy. Winds coming in from the east at 8 miles per hour, making it feel closer to 15 degrees out there. So it's going to still feel very cold as we go through the evening. This afternoon, we saw a very weak cold front come down and drop our highs to around 34 degrees at DIA. Well, as we move through the weekend, we're going to see those 40s and even 50s. We take a look at our HD Doppler radar. We saw some very brief spotty snow showers in portions of the high country, even into northern portions of the foothills there. Those are going to continue to fizzle out as we go through the rest of the evening. So we wake up tomorrow morning. We're dry but cloudy. We're going to see some in and out cloud cover throughout the day across the state. And as we go into late Saturday evening, we're going to watch for more spotty brief snow showers in the high country. Those will continue throughout the day Sunday. We're going to be dry across the eastern half of the state, though. Pretty chilly tonight. Overnight lows in the teens and 20s. We're going to see similar temperatures off to the west as well. And as we go through the day tomorrow, we're going to see those highs start to rebound again. Low 40s expected in Denver, though most of the front range in eastern plains likely to see 30s. We might even max out in the upper 20s across portions of the plains. We'll be a little warmer as you make your way into the mountains. 30s and 40s expected there. Same goes for the western slope. So we're in the low 40s for our Saturday. We make it into the low 50s for our Sunday with those spotty snow showers. The rest of the work week looking pretty mild. My good news is that today we got to meet our daughter's heart donor family. Wow. Um, bittersweet news, but good news indeed. And it's next. Each Friday, we head to a different spot somewhere in the state and ask a simple question. What's your good news? And the answers often range from the silly and the mundane to the kind of stuff that'll stop you in your tracks. My good news for the day is I got to come into the aquarium and I get to share all the awesome things we have here with all the kids that are coming in. Not a lot of people with cowboy hats at the aquarium. No, I think I'm the only one. I was kind of looking around. <laughs> so I was trying to start a trend. My good news is going to see Charlie Crockett tonight. My good news is that I read 101 words in a minute. My good news is that I started a chapter book that I'm writing. from Roswell, New Mexico, and we came down here to Denver to meet with the little girl who had got our little brother's heart. My good news is that today we got to meet our daughter's heart donor family. Our brother had donated a lot of his like organs and stuff to people around the world, or people around the country to save their lives. We had got a call from the mom, and she had called us saying that this is my daughter and she has our brother's heart and it just made everyone around our home and family happy. My good news is that we got to meet the little girl who was blessed to have our little brother's heart and save her life. Just go show, you never know what folks are walking around with in their lives. We are back with your feedback about what might have been a cock up on my part next. Maggie writes in tonight to say, is cock up a word or even allowed? Two good questions there, Maggie. Um, so cock up is, is a British saying. It just means like a blunder or an error. Like it's not, it's not a dirty thing. I looked up the word origin and some people think it refers to like medieval arrows and other people think it was like misset type on printers. Other folks think it was 1920s British military slang for when something went wrong. But anyway, it's not dirty business. Your second question, is it allowed? Well, the bosses decide what's allowed around here, so if I'm informed that saying it was a cock-up on my part, then that's the last time you'll hear it here. I'll see you next time. <laughs>